Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where the puzzle on the screen is by none other than Fistamafel, uh, the most scary constructor <laughs> in the world Sudoku scene. In fact, you know, if they ever write a history of Cracking the Cryptic, I think one of the things that we'll be most proud about is that we can showcase puzzles by um, by these sorts of geniuses and you know Fistamafel is undoubtedly a puzzle setting genius um, how many times over the last two or three years have we been just left absolutely gobsmacked um, by his puzzles uh, well it's a lot and I think Mark's description of him is very appropriate so Mark describes a Fistamafel puzzle as basically you take a rule set you, you hypothetically imagine the very best puzzle you could possibly set with that rule set, and that's what Fistemafel will have done. Um, so he doesn't just find a rule set and create a puzzle or even a good puzzle. He just takes it to such an extreme level, and, and the, the genius sort of burns out of the puzzle into your retinas. Um, and this one has a very, very weird rule set. I mean, this is almost a miracle type puzzle. There's hardly anything in this grid. Um, and there's a negative constraint and I have no clue at all how this can have a unique solution. Um, it's called Roman Whispers today, which is obviously a bit of a pun on the German Whispers puzzle type. Uh, and we'll have a go at this in just a second. The only thing I've got to tell you about today is that um, uh, many, many, many of you, literally hundreds of you, have been solving um, our quite approachable Sudoku hunt on Patreon. So very well done to all those of you who managed to solve it. I, I can't read the names out. Well, I could read the names out, but it would make for a very dull video because literally it would be 15 minutes of me reading out names. Um, so, but well done to all those, who, the, all those of you who've solved it. If you haven't had a go yet, do have a go. It really is approachable. That's what we designed it to be. Uh, a bit of a break from some of the monster puzzle hunts that we've been putting out recently. Um, uh, I think we'll have another one of those for you soon, though, so don't worry. Those of you who like the hard stuff as well, yeah, we've got you covered. Um, other than that, what else have we got on, on, on Patreon at the moment? Well, we have to have lots of souls of Fistamafel puzzles. Um, so, uh, and in particular, I'd like to point you in the direction of the Aquarium Philomeno, which I did a couple of weeks ago. That is it's not a Sudoku puzzle, but it is an absolutely extraordinary sort of logic puzzle. Um, uh, one of the best puzzles I've ever done and not easy. That video is uh, a popcorn video. It's about 90 minutes long. <laughs> so uh, other than that, nothing else to tell you. So let's crack on this. Uh, the rules are as follows. Uh, normal Sudoku rules apply. Adjacent digits on a gray line must differ by at least five. So these are actually German whispers lines. Let's just think about what that means. So that means if this square here is a two, this square here now has to be at least five different from two. So it could be a seven, an eight, or a nine. Let's make it a, let's make it a seven. So if this is a seven now, this cell has to be at least five different from seven. Well, it can't be two anymore, so it would have to be one. So that's a possible configuration of that line. Um, now, the only rinky-dink here, the digits in two orthogonally adjacent cells must not add up to five or ten. So anywhere in this puzzle where we have a domino, we know those two squares couldn't, for example, be a two three pair or a one four pair because that would they would add up to five or a two eight pair, etc. Um, that is it. So apparently just these these few lines, and they're not long lines either. This is the terrifying thing. Normally, in a, where you only ha only have German whispers, you have longer lines. So this is very peculiar, but do have a go. Um, the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, I know two things basically about German whispers lines, and they are that German whispers lines, that's every line here in this puzzle, cannot have a five on it. And that's because if you try and put a five on it, your next digit is going to be problematic because it has to be five away from five. So it's either a double digit number or it's zero or negative, neither of which are valid Sudoku numbers don't get any ideas constructors out there. Um, so we can't have a five on any of these lines. So the fives, 
fives in the boxes where we've actually got meaningful German whispers lines would have to be in those highlighted cells. I can't see anything there. Let me just hang on. Let me just stare at this for a bit longer. No, I, I can't actually. Um, okay. Well, the other thing I know about German whispers lines is rather more worrying in the sense that I know that they alternate. We could see this from the example, but if you think about this digit, uh, now we know it can't be five. We can divide it up into being one of t in, in one of two sets. We can say it's either in the set of digits one, two, three, and four, or it's in the set of digits six, seven, eight, or nine. And you can see, if you think about it uh, for a moment or two, you'll realize that if this is a low digit, so if this is a one, two, three, or four digit, this digit actually has to be a high digit because it can't be a low digit again, uh, because obviously none of these can be five apart. So this would have to be a high digit. And then the moment you do that, you realize that, well, then the next digit now can't be five away from six, seven, eight, or nine. So it has to be a low digit again. So you get an alternation uh, along the line. Now that's normally extremely important uh, it's normally extremely important because the, the whole goal of the puzzle normally in a German whisper is to identify the, the polarity, if you like, of one of the cells on a line. Here, I have no idea how you do that. I'm, I'm presuming there must be something funny about a horseshoe shaped German whispers line. But I'm slightly... I'm slightly concerned about that because I I think if there had if there was something unusual about a horseshoe shaped German whispers line, I would have seen it before. <laughs> um, maybe there's something about a horseshoe shaped German whispers line if if you combine it with the neg this negative constraint about fives and tens. Okay, I think what we'll have to do is sort of explore one of these lines and just learn about it because I I don't have a clue what else we can do here. So let's just try and put some digits into this. If we put a one, a one as, as the first cell on a horseshoe, what can we say about how this horseshoe will develop? We can say that well, okay, so we now know that those two digits are the opposite polarity from this digit. So they're going to have to be high digits. And I can see that neither of those can be a nine because of the negative constraint. Uh, obviously, if either of these were nine, you'd have a domino that's summed to 10. So these digits have to be from six, seven, and eight. Oh, you can't put a six here. If you put a six in the middle of a German whispers line, you have a problem with those two cells, which now both have to be five away from six and therefore both have to be one. So we can, we, uh, oh, oh, no. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Yes, okay, and this one can't be six because that would have to be a one and it would repeat the one. So in fact, if you go, if the first cell is a one, you must have a, oh, that's very, all right, that doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. That's fascinating. <laughs> right. So it is the negative constraint that gives us a problem. Because because this has to be a 7-8 pair. At this square, therefore, we know it's the opposite polarity to high. So it's low and it's not 1. Well, it can't be 4 because that would require double 9 on the line, which is impossible because of the 1 here already. So this has to be 2 or 3. Now, whichever it is, it will connect with an eight in one of those positions, which will break the puzzle by creating a domino that adds up to 10. So that's just impossible. Now, is that logic, is that logic symmetrical? I think it must be. What by symmetrical, I mean, if I try and the, the other extreme digit here, if I try nine there, am I gonna have exactly the same issue? I think I must do. So if this is nine, yeah, the relationship between the numbers, although they're different numbers, it's the same It's the same things we're considering. Now we can't put ones into those two squares. And we can't put fours into those two squares because were we were to do so, this square would have to be another nine. And obviously, we, so even if we put four in, in well, we can't, ah, sorry, 
I'm, let me, I'm eliding over some logic here. If that's a four, that has to be a nine, obviously. And if that's a four, that has to be a nine. So we, we always end up with two nines. I'm not saying there are two fours in those positions. Now, so that means these two squares have to be two and three, which means this square now, which can't be six because that would require one in one of those positions, this square here can't be nine, so it has to be seven or eight, and whichever it is, it will connect to a friend in one of those squares, which will create a domino that sums to 10. So the logic is symmetrical. So, so no, no horseshoe tip in the whole puzzle can be an extreme digit, can be a one or a nine, or if, and they can't be five. So one, nine, and five are all ruled out. So we can only put two, three, four, six, seven, and eight in the tips. Right, I'm gonna try this again. So let's try two. If we have a two, now we can't put eight into those squares. So those squares must be from six, seven, and nine. Can't put eight into them because that would create a domino adding to 10. We can't put six in the middle of the line because that's not, A, A it's not five away from two and B, uh, well, no, that's the main reason in fact. Um, you could put seven here. Uh, let me just think about this. So, uh, yes, okay, what you can't do, no, you can't, oh, that's right, that's very interesting, right, if you put two here, what's this digit? And the answer is, it's a six, because if it was not a six, if this was a seven, nine pair, what digit would you put here? There is now no digit available. It has to be the opposite polarity to high, so it's a low digit. Now, which digit are we going to choose? If we choose one, we have to connect it to a nine, and that will create a domino that sums to 10. That's no good. If we put a three, we have to put a seven in one of those. That's the same problem. And if we put a four, both of those squares have to be nines to be five away, and you can't repeat nine in the box. So that's weird. So if you start with a two, you have to have a six, which means you have to have a one, because it's got to be five away. This square can't be an eight, because it would be in a domino with a two, and it can't be a nine. It would be in a domino with a one, so that has to be a seven. So the, good grief. So if you start, so if you have, we know you can't have one, five or nine. If you have two, there is only one way of doing it. And presumably that's symmetrical. I can't see why the, what we did before. I mean, I'm, so what am I saying? I'm saying I expect there to be another iteration of horseshoe that works. Let's just do it here, which is going to be making each of these, if we make these digits add up to 10. So if I made that an eight, that a three, that an uh, a nine and that a four, I'm saying I think that works. So let's have a check if that's eight. Now this square and this square have to be low digits. Uh, they can't be two, so they have to be from one, three and four. Whoopsie, one, three and four. We can't put four here, it's not five away from eight. We can't make this not four because we get the one, three pair problem. And this would have to not be seven or nine to avoid dominoes and it can't be a six because those can't both be four so this <laughs> this square has to be a four that has to be a nine to be five away and that can't be a one because of the ten relationship so we get eight three nine four i can't remember if that's what i said but those two add up to ten those two add up to ten those two add up to ten and those two up to ten so there is symmetry right so we have found two possible ways of arranging a horseshoe. Right, I'm gonna keep going with this. Three, if this is three, this square and this square are high and are not seven. So they are six, eight or nine. You can't put six there, it's not five away. So this comes down to eight or nine. And is it the same again? If I make this, 
it is the same again. If that isn't a 6, you get an 8, 9 here, but you can't put 1 or 2 here then, because you're going to make a domino one way or the other. You can't put 3, it would repeat in the box. You can't put 4 because you'd need double 9 on the thingy, or the line. So, so that's just broken. So you have to have 6 again, which means you have, not 6, yeah, 6. You have, oh, 6, you have to have 1. And therefore that has to be 8, because 9 would create a 10 domino. So 3, 8, 1, 6 is possible. But it was before, it was 2, 7. So it was 2, 7, 1, 6. I'm going to, actually, I'm going to write these down. So we had 2, 7, 1, 6 as possible. And then, then we had the counterpart to that, which were the digits adding to 10. So we had this, 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 this as possible. Now we found 3816 is possible. And presumably therefore 7294 will work. Let's check 7294 here. So if that's a seven, that's a seven I'm also wondering whether do I actually need to check oh, I can't work that out I can't work that out in my head I'm gonna to have to do it the long way around right is seven here what's that telling us neither of these can be a three so this is one two four that can't be a four now this if it's not a four gives us the problem it's the same logic four nine can't have a one that's got to be a two so that is true so Seven two nine four. So what are we learning here? Let's just let's just put this one down as well. Seven two nine four. So that's so we've now got four ways of making a horseshoe work. In every in every one of them. You've either got a 6, 1 or a 4, 9. You've got some arrangement of the two sevens. So two sevens sometimes appear and eight threes sometimes appear. Right, and if we start with a 4 here, what I, what I was, my question in my brain before was if I start with a 4 here, does this just, um, does this just translate into one of these two? So if I start with a four rather than starting, so you can see that to create this one, for example, actually, I know what I should do. I should make sure that the, should do this, shouldn't I? So I know, I know where my starting, my start, start position is for each horseshoe. If I start with a four, is this just gonna be a rotational version of this? I think it will be, but I can't, I'm not absolutely certain. So if I go four, nine, now we know that this has to be a seven or an eight. Yes, okay, and whatever it is, this one is, is the one that prevents this domino adding up to 10. Yes, 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 I understand. So that, this is the generalized version of these two. Because whatever I decide to put here, I have to put the, the, the digit here that doesn't make this domino add up to 10. So this is, this, this and, and that logic will be the same, obviously, if we start with a six instead. So what we've got now is a complete set of horseshoes, although you can flip them upside down. So you could start with a six at the top. So this is all the horseshoes that you can possibly have. Now, what does that mean? That means that, hmm, how do these horseshoes align with each other? So we've got, you've always got to have a tip of a horseshoe always has a, a sort of 
a non-extreme digit in it, by which I mean a digit that's close to 5. It always has a 4 or a 6 in it. So that means that within those four cells there, there is a 4-6 pair. Because one of these horseshoes will have a 4 in its tip, and the other one can't then have a 4 in its tip, so we'll have a 6 in its tip. Right, and that means a little deduction. Those two squares are not are not the 4s and the 6s. Because if they were, they would be a 4-6 pair in a domino, and they would add up to 10. Right. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> but... So, if this one... How on earth do we do this, though? It doesn't work the same in the column, because we haven't got four tips in column five. I've only got three tips. So... That's annoying. Um, so if this was a 4 or a 6, that would be a 4 or a 6. Or the, oh, that would have to be the opposite. And then this would be this version. So I think the idea must be that somehow we can... We can find out which of these horseshoes... Because you always have to have a 4 or a 6 on a horseshoe. This horseshoe will be the same as one of these horseshoes. Well, when I say the same, it will have the same... Maybe it won't have to be exactly the same. It will have to have either the same in terms of being a 6-1 horseshoe. So if this is a 6-1 horseshoe, that could be a 6-1 horseshoe as well. But this will have to be the same as one of these. But I think, unfortunately, if that was a 6-1 horseshoe, it might be possible for that to be a 6-1 horseshoe as well. Just providing that the 6-1 was this side. So... I don't think it's, a, it's not going to be about what goes around the horseshoe, is it? If let me just have a quick think about this. So, if this was the horseshoe in one of these horseshoes, then this you couldn't put two next to the eight, you couldn't put six next to the four. 6 or 1 next to the 4 actually, so that there would have to be a 1 and a 6 in those three positions. But the 4 is the most constraining digit. I don't know. I think what we might have to do is to sketch one of these in. If this is 4, 9, then we're either in the world where this is a two well this is a two or a three and that's a seven or an eight and then this is going to have to be a six version of a horseshoe let's just tidy this up and have a think about this so if this was a six version of a horseshoe that is actually interesting because i could if this was true i could play oh no i can't ah hoo, hoo, hoo. yes Wow, okay, this is weird, but this is very, very interesting. Now, if this is a four, what digit do we know appears in one of those cells? Well, the answer to that is six, because there's always a f either a four or a six on the tips of the horseshoes, and this four is preventing this from being a four horseshoe. So this is a six horseshoe, which means there's a one in one of those two squares, which means in this box, you have to put a one in one of those two squares where it cannot go. Because if you put it there, that's a domino that adds up to 5. If you put it there, that's a domino that adds up to 10. So that is mighty. That is mighty. That, that means... 
So if this is a 4-9 horseshoe, the 4-9 has to be on that side of it. And if that was true, that couldn't be the 6, and that would be the 6, and that would have to be... Right, so that's, that's the direction I'm going to go in then. So we've now worked out that this is not a 4-9 horseshoe here. So the question I want to ask is, can it be a 4-9 horseshoe here? Because if it can't be, we know this is a 6-1 horseshoe. Um, 4-9, so that means this is a low digit, that's a high digit. Now we know that this is a 6-1 horseshoe, and we know the 6 can't go here, look, because of the inability of this domino. So the 6 would have to go exactly there, and that would have to be a 1. And then this would have to be 6-1. This is a high digit, which is a 7 or an 8, and that's a low digit, which is a 2 or a 3. Ah, okay. And that's annoying. By the way, obviously ignore all these. These are just my list of horseshoes that are possible. Um, why do I say that's annoying? It's because that looks possible to me. Because this 9 has to find a home here. Can't go next to the 1, so it would have to go here, where it makes a nice relationship. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that's so clever. <laughs> okay, Fist of a Fell, you are a total genius. This is ridiculous. Right, this is, um, this doesn't work. This is what I'm telling you. This doesn't work. So, the, the answer now is not to be found in, in the fact that the 9 is restricted here. It is a bit restricted, but not enough, because the 9 can find a home there in box 5. But why is this a problem? Well, it's, a, it's the most beautiful problem because of this horseshoe. This horseshoe now, because the six has been pushed over, can't have a four, well, no, can't have a six up there. So it has a four in one of those two positions. What does that mean we have to have in one of those two positions? Nine, where it clashes. So this, this, this horseshoe is not a four nine horseshoe. The sentences I get to say on this channel are baffling and marvellous. So this is this is a 6-1 horseshoe, which means there's a 6 in one of those and a 1 in one of those. It means that this is now a 4-9 horseshoe, which goes that way round. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> and now, where does the 1 go in this box? And the answer is in one of those two squares. Because you can't, you can never put a one or a nine on a horseshoe. Now, if it goes in one of those two squares, this cannot be the four nine limb of this horseshoe because it will always create a bad domino, and bad dominoes are very naughty, and we must must avoid them. So that becomes we get digits. That's a four. That's a nine. That can't be six now, or that's connecting to a in a domino that adds up to ten. So that's six. That's one. We've practically done the puzzle. We have. But this is, this, it does feel like progress. So that's 2, 3, that's 7, 8. This is 2, 3, that's 7, 8. I get a 7, 8 pair here. I get. Oh, hang on, I've got a 1 next to a 2. Oh, hang on, I've done this wrong, haven't I? I've got my... <laughs> I've got excited and got my stuff the wrong way round. Why is... No, this should be a high digit. Okay, okay, this is the wrong way round. That's got to be a 7 or an 8. That's got to be a 2 or a 3. Have I done it right up here? Yes, I've done it right there. So that's 9 going low and then high again. The 1 here is free. The 9 here is not free. Where does the 9 go in this box? It can't go next to the 1. That would create a 10 domino, so that's a 9. I think I might have to start getting rid of my... I think I can get rid of my, um, my sort of list of possible horseshoes, because I think we understand the horseshoes now. They always have a 4-9 on them or 6-1 on them, and then the other digits are always 2, 3, 7, and 8 in a way that, that doesn't create a 10 domino. So yes, 
Okay, I can remember that. So let's get rid of those. Can I just delete that? How do I do that? No. Okay. So I better... How do I get rid of those? Do I have to go over them? I do. There we go. Okay, so now we have a grid of purity. Um, and do we know what that is now? Yes, we do. Of course we do, because of the one here. This can't be a six. If that was a six, it have to put a one there, and the one is looking at it. So those are fours, and those are nines. So there's a nine down here by Sudoku. Um... Okay, nine here by Sudoku. Um. <laughs> and even though I feel like we've made real progress, like I've got a digit and everything, or I've got five digits, what on earth do we do now? I have not got a clue. Can I do... So this is four, nine, and then this, so these digits here have to include a low digit. So that's a, one of, the, depending on where the four, nine goes, if it was here, it'd go four, nine, and then this would be a two or a three, and this would be a seven or an eight. So these are from four, seven, and eight, and these are from two, three, and nine. Uh, no, uh, f uh, four. So four must be one of those cells. I, s ah, I can place it. I can place it down here. Because if I put the four on the whispers line, it must go next to a nine. And we know that the nine will then clash. So the four can go and be placed, sorry, down here. Which... don't know what that does beyond beyond just placing a four. So, <laughs> good grief, what on earth do we do now? Um, do we know, do we know whether these are different from each other? Is there anything to tell us that nine four? So if this if this was two seven, do we know whether that has to be three eight or can that be two seven as well? So if that was two seven and that was two seven, you'd have to put a two down here. You'd have to put a seven up there. Two seven. You would. Would you have any problems with anything? You would... I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think there's any problem with a 2-3 going in a string here with a 9. If this was 2-7, that, that would be 4-8. Which means you couldn't put a 2 in those squares. So this would have to be eight three. Then I'd have to put a three. Ah, right. Wow, okay, okay, I've got something small here. Let's think about this horseshoe. In particular, let's think about this domino. Let's make this yellow. Now we know that those two digits don't add up to 10. So that is a domino that does not add up to 10. Now, whatever version of this, whatever the, whether this is a seven or an eight, obviously it can't go in those squares. So let's imagine it's a seven for a moment. That means that there's an eight in one of these and a three in one of these. Also, 
a domino in either of those two positions that doesn't add up to 10. So I'm going to make that a different color. I don't, I don't know, I don't know which of these dominoes. I'm going to uh, better gray flash them as well, just to say I don't know which of the dominoes is either that one or that one is the opposite of this one. And this is interesting because one of these squares is a green two three, and that green two three needs to find a home in this box, which obviously can't be down there by Sudoku. Now this is where I think it gets beautiful. That square cannot be a green 2, 3, because if it's a green 2, 3, it's connecting here with the digit that it would make a 10 domino with. And you, you can see that because obviously I've labeled these to be dominoes that don't add up to 10. So if we connect, if we ever connect a green square with, so if we ever connect a low green with a high yellow, it will add up to 10. And if we ever connect a high green with a low yellow, whichever the other way around is, that will add up to 10. So you can never have a, a green 2, 3, a connecting to a yellow 7, 8. And that cell therefore is not a green 2, 3, which means this square is a green 2, 3. Oh, this is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. Good grief. Right, so now I know what the colour of that is, because that now can't be a yellow 7, 8. Oh, I've got tears in my eyes. That is just mad. It's absolutely mad. This can't be a yellow 7, 8. Because if it was, that domino would add up to 10. So that's a green domino. So these were different. Oh. Um, right, now by Sudoku, that's got to be a yellow 2, 3. So now these digits have got to be a 5... Uh, a 4 and a 7 or an 8 and the 7 or the 8 up here is a yellow so these squares are now 4, 9 and yellow 7, 8 4 maybe I should give those some sort of flashy, flashage and maybe I should give those some sort of flashage as well. So now, what does that mean? Can I... No, I was wondering if I could use the negative constraint here, but there is no negative constraint between any of those digits. Okay, uh, what do we do with this knowledge? Can we? Good grief, I've got no idea. Um, there's got to be a green 2, 3 down here. <laughs> um, golly gosh, I have not got a clue. Green seven eight maybe in this box. Yes. Where does green seven eight go? It can't go here. So it's in one of these two, but it can't connect to a yellow two three. So it must go there. So that's a green seven eight. Therefore it's not a one, which seems to place a one here. So that means these two squares are now a five six pair. which might affect this one's ability to be a four, if that's a six. We've got, we've got another domino down here, which is a whispers line. So this whispers line has to have, yeah, that's a little bit interesting. If you look at this whispers line down here, it may look very short and insignificant, but it can't have four on it. It can't have one on it. And it can't have nine on it. And it can't have five on it. So, so it can't have six on it, because if it had six on it, 
this would be a 6, 1 pair, and that would break that square. So this square is made up of 2, 3, 7s and 8s. And, oh, I see. Yeah, and they're yellow. That's very clever. Wow. This little short thing here is actually amazing. I'm, I'm going to double check that logic. I think this is a yellow 2, 3. Um, let me just double check. So it can't have 1 on it. It can't have 9 on it. It can't have 5 on it. It's a whispers line. It can't have 4. Definitely can't have 6 because that would cause a 1. Yeah, so it is 2, 3, 7, 8 and it can't be a green one. Both greens are seen in the column. So that's yellow. So that means that these squares are, well, they include a yellow 2, 3, 7 and 8. Yellow 2 or 3 and yellow 7 or 8. And the yellow, t the yellow 2, 3 can't connect with the green 7, 8, but we don't know where the green 7 and 8 goes. At least I don't think I do. I'm not at all sure about that. What about this column then? I've got a lot of stuff in this column. Yes, okay, this square has a counterpart so whatever this square isn't must go here so that's a five or a six that puts pressure on four potentially but four is not in it, near it so it doesn't put pressure on four uh, <laughs> oh dear um Sorry, I'm not seeing what I've got to do here at all. One is a little bit restricted in this column. Because I was thinking you can't put one in the middle of the nines there, because then it will connect with a nine and make a ten domino in one direction. And you can't put a one here because it would connect to a four. So the one in this column, I think, is in one of those two cells. Now, if this was a one, that would force this not to be a... So that would force the four nine upwards. That would be very cool. If this is the one, that would force the nine downwards next to a four, which it could probably go next to. Got to put a green, green two three down here as well. So the uh, ah no, right, forget about ones for a moment. Let's think about green two three. That's much better. Where does green two three go in this string of digits? And the answer I think is only there. Because if you put green two three next to yellow of either variety. It's a problem, isn't it? If we if we had a green 2, 3 here, let's just imagine that's a green 2, 3. It's either next to a, a 2, 3, which will mean that domino adds to 5, or it's next to a yellow 7, 8, which means it, those two would add up to 10, and that's broken. And that works exactly the same if it's there. So that's got to be a 2, 3 that's green, which means 9 move. Ah, oh, this is... Beautiful. Right, now come back to the ones. How can this be a one? It can't because now it's got, if it was, it would be next to the nine. So that's not a one. That must be the one in the column, which which pushes the four upwards. So that's four nine now. So I need to be a bit careful here. That, that one's the high digit. So that's a seven or an eight. This is the two or the three. Get rid of the corner marks. Those lose their greenage. These lose their flash flashage. <laughs> um, and we can maybe get rid of the orange because we don't need that. Now there's a one down there, which uh, might be restricted by wherever the nine goes. This column, 
these squares in fact have to be from 5, 6 and 9 now just by Sudoku. So uh, I was going to say the 6 might be restricted by the 4 but it's not because the 4 is hidden away in the corner. Um, one has to be in one of those cells. Four is down here. How can we make more progress now? We can. This is totally unrestricted, I think. So these squares now definitely include. Oh, I see. So they include the yellow versions of two, three and seven, eight, which Oh no, the yellow 7, 8 can go there. It's only the yellow 2, 3 that can't go there. So yes, you can connect you can connect a high yellow to a high green. Because although that domino will add to 15, there's no restriction on 15. So yellow... So we can't say that this is a yellow pair, is what, what I think I'm saying. I'd like to say that, but I don't think we can. Uh, and the other digit that's in this string of digits is whatever this isn't. <sighs> wow, okay. I mean, that's... I don't know what to do. Um, four, five, seven, eight. I've got to have two green cells up here. If I don't... I can put green cells together, so that's no, there's no restriction there. Oh, is there a six up there as well? Okay, right. So this is six along with double green. So this is six and double green. This is yellow two, three. one and five oh i suppose one thing you can't put the yellow two three there because it'll be next to a green so the yellow two three is in one of those squares uh, this is getting absurd it's very hard to pencil mark as well because all I know here is that there is a yellow 7, 8 in one of those three squares. And all I know here is there's a yellow 2, 3 in one of those squares. And don't really know how to show that. So this is my, my best effort. Um, how long have we had? How can I have had 47 minutes? That's gone by in about five minutes. Literally, this is some sort of time machine. <sighs> one. One in that box has to be in one of those four cells. Is that in any way even worth noting? So that means you can't put... You can't put six on this whispers line then, if you can't put one on it. So six... So six is in the same cells. Okay, well that's a little bit interesting. So you can't put one or six on this whispers line. So does that mean I can't put nine on it as well? Or four? That would be very interesting. Uh, I don't see why that would be the case. Um, certainly possible you could put nine on it if you didn't put nine on it it would be two two three sevens and eights ah right good grief i mean right this is not that easy to see in my opinion that's impossible i think Isn't that impossible because of the colouring? 
it is impossible because of the colouring. That's really beautiful. Good grief. Right, so what I'm learning now is that in this puzzle, two, three, sevens, eights in a string on a whispers line are problematic because let's, well, we can just choose. What do we think this is? And it doesn't matter what we choose. Let's just say it's a high digit. It could be a low digit, it won't matter. But now by, by polarity of the whispers line, these are both twos and threes. And therefore one of them will create a 10 domino because one of them will be the opposite color to whatever that is. Isn't that weird? So that means that this whispers line Contrary to what I thought before, I thought because we got we locked one and six off it, we might be able to lock four and nine off it. It does have a nine and a four on it. And the nine can't go here. So there is a nine in one of those two squares. And the four must be next to it. And that's very annoying. Because that means the four can still go in any of those positions. But the f ah, now there's a four on this whispers line. So there's a nine on this whispers line. I feel like that's some sort of breakthrough, but I can't see what it's doing. So there's a four nine here. There's got to be a four and a nine here, therefore. Now the other digit on this one will depend. Uh, sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry if you're spotting what I meant to do here. I can't, I can't, I can't see what it is. <laughs> I can't see. I feel like that's a hugely significant point that this has to have four and nine on it. I'd love to know where just one of those digits was because it would give me the polarity of the line. And then this one is similar. So this one also has that property. You can't, well, you can't put four in the middle. Oh, that's it. Of course, that's it. Yes, that is it. Right. Let's go back to basics. I'm saying so caught up in horseshoes and 10 dominoes and five dominoes. I'm forgetting basic German whisper logic, which is, in fact, that basic German whisper logic is also, oh, why, why is my brain not working? Brain, brain, what are you doing? Oh, my goodness me. I'm so sorry. You've all been shouting at me for about a minute and a half, haven't you? And I don't blame you at all. Because one thing, it's one of the few, very few things I know about German Whispers lines, um, is you can never put a four in the middle of one if the, if the two cells next to them see each other. Because, of course, if you put a four in the middle of it, you've got to put double nine around the edge. So, actually, I do know the polarity of this Whispers line. Um, it's the polarity is that that is not four. So, those are low. Both of those must be low now, so that must be the high digit. Can't be, can't put nine on the end, or you're going to run into a polarity problem. So this is a nine. It must be surrounded. It can't be surrounded by one, so it must be surrounded by two, three, and four. Oh, look! I, I don't think I can do. I well, what I wanted to say was this might be yellow. But I think it can be still be four. Very annoying. Um, okay. But also, we can do the same thing here. Neither of these can be four. Or you'd have to put double nine along the whispers line. So those are not four. And that gives us the polarity of this whispers line as well. So now we are cooking with proverbial gas. That's got to be low. But does it? could it be one? don't know and this has got to be high uh, that is right that can be six seven or eight I think so that can't be one because of the domino of course if that's a one yeah if that's a one 
those add up to 10. So that is a two or a three. So that's not a six. So this is, ooh, yes. Okay, so that's yellow because it can't be green. <laughs> now, does that mean that's yellow? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it necessarily does. Oh, no, I don't know. No, sorry, I don't know. So, so one now is up there in box number three, which means it's not over here. So one is in one of those two cells. That feels, that is beautiful. That is just beautiful. <laughs> it's just beautiful. Every single deduction you get in one of these puzzles, tears again, you know, you have to just pay attention because the, the most minuscule of things, like the fact that there's a one up here leading to a one here, you know, I, I think in Fist of Fell Puzzles, I give myself an extra second to say, is there something ludicrous it's doing? Yes, there is. Because now I can tell you that is not a one six pair. Because if that's a one six pair, I know one of those digits is a four. And whichever one it is, is making a vertical domino that adds up to five or ten. That's not going to work. So that is not a one six pair. And if it's not a one six pair, the six in the box goes upwards. And if the six in the box goes upwards, we get to place six in box number three. Because it can't go under a four where it would make a domino. Well, make a domino that adds up to ten. So that's not... Right, so that's not six. Now I've got green flashing here. So this is green. We have now conclusively proved this is green, but we don't know what what digit it is. It's two, three, seven, or eight, and the domino won't help us to know. But does that mean we know that this digit? Oh, no, I knew this digit already. I've not thought about this, but look, I've got a yellow two, three looking down here. And I think... Yeah, one of those two squares had to be a yellow 2, 3, so it's not this one. So that means that that one is actually, you can delete all the pencil marking from it, make it yellow, make it a 2, 3. Now, that can't connect to green of any type, can it? No. No, it, it can't. It can't. There's two greens in those three squares. If, if either green is here... It's either making a domino that adds up to five or a domino that adds up to ten. So that must be the other digit, which seems to have to be a six. So that's a six, which means it's not green and grey. That, therefore, is definitely green and is two, three, seven or eight. Six. Now six. Ah, now six can't go next to four. So six is in one of two places can't put one on that whispers line anymore no that's not right it's not the right way around I, I, I do that quite a lot in German whispers is I get you know I get confused about the causality between ones and sixes if I'd got a one in one of those you couldn't put six on the whispers line but the six here actually allows there to be a one on that because the one is actually completely um, you know it actually doesn't put pressure on anything you just have to make sure the other digit is a six, seven, eight, or nine, although it couldn't be a six. So it would have to be a seven, eight, or a nine. Right now. No, I don't I think I looked at that one and didn't think I knew what it was. So what do we do now? We can place six in box number two by Sudoku. It's got to go there. So that means that's definitely not yellow or grey. Now does that, yes, okay, so now these two squares are both definitely yellows. So this is a two, three, seven, eight yellow option. So does that mean something for that digit? I don't think so. Well, I say that, obviously this digit couldn't be green now but we know it can't be green anyway 
so that's no good okay and I tell you what's worrying here is that I'm worried I'm running out of clues to use I've got this <laughs> I've got that one left everything else I think is is done so what on earth are we missing now I said ah, one thing we're missing is that nine there means that ca oh yeah where does one go in this box can't go next to four can't go next to nine good grief so we get a one up here which places one here which places five here holy moly uh, as Elton John said um, what did he actually say holy moly uh, I always think it's holy moly but it might not be Da, 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 I have been um, I don't know I'm distracting myself now uh, five in this row has to be over here five is the most useless digit in this puzzle though because five can never make a domino that adds up to five and five can never make a domino that adds up to ten and five can never be on a whispers line so five is appallingly awful Um, six here means that's a five apparently by Sudoku so that's a five and that's a six so how many sixes have I got now the answer is many oh, uh, no six down there don't think it's restricted um, five comes out of these two squares so that's now a six nine pair six is a line so i've got to put a six some oh ooh, nearly interesting so i've got to put a six somewhere in row nine of the grid it now can't go in any of those cells i can't go in that cell so there's a six in one of those two positions so the last sixes are in this x-wing and this x-wing Five is it must be in one of those two cells but again five is so unrestricted it's painful what's the other digit I need down here I need a nine in one of those that can't be nine anymore yeah it's probably Sudoku we have to do now so this digit is four seven or eight I've got to put got to put four in one of these as well I mustn't forget that there's definitely a four down here it's not there so this is seven eight or nine and it can't be nine because it would be next to a one yeah there we go so that's now proved to be a yellow seven eight Which, which means I've got my pair of yellows here and I've got my pair of greens. So these squares are not yellow. And this is a four nine pair. And this, oh, this is a four nine pair. Yes, so the nine gets placed and the four gets placed. Wow. Now, that, what does that do? Four is now in one of those two squares. In box number this box down here box number nine I'm forgetting the name of the boxes nine is in one of those cells so nine can't go next to one seven eight sorry I can't see how to Nine has to be in one of those cells. Is there a reason this can't be a nine? That would get me a nine and a six. The thing with Vistamafel is it could be, it, you know, it could be, it could be something like that. I've got to put.
Oh, is that it? Do I know? If I knew what this was, I might be able to... I've got to put yellow seven eight. Yeah, one of those is yellow seven eight, isn't it? Because of this seven eight. One of these must be a yellow seven eight. I don't know which one. But whichever one it is, is pushing pushing yellow seven eight down here. Now, if a yellow 7-8 is down here, it cannot connect to green 2-3. Green 2-3 is not there anyway. So green 2-3 is either here or it's in one of those two squares. So if, if it was here, that would be a problem because then it would definitely touch yellow 7-8 and create a 10 domino. So green 2, 3 is not there, it's not there. It's either there or it's here. I've also got to deal with the fact I've got to put 4 here somewhere. So it... So if it's here, that's a 4. That would be a green 7, 8. That would be a yellow 7, 8. Mm, okay, I'm not sure. I really want this to be a yellow 7-8. Uh, oh, hang on, there's a yellow 2-3 over here, look. So these squares are now 2, 3, 6 or 9 only. One of them is yellow. But that oh, it's really hard to, to, for me to get away from the. I have to remember this could be the yellow seven eight. I keep wanting I keep wanting to make this the yellow two three because I'm seeing this as yellow seven eight, but it's not. One of those is yellow seven eight. Oh, so so there's an X wing on yellow seven eights in those squares. Oh, which is obvious. We already knew there was a yellow seven eight in one of those squares. So those squares are one five seven and eight. And these squares at the top, oh, this is getting horribly complicated. Don't know. Okay. Um, how do we make more progress here? What is it I'm likely to be missing? <laughs> Let's ask that question. Sudoku, I hear you all chant. Um, Hmm, I probably am. Or, or at least I'm probably missing negative constraintage. That is very po pos possible, plausible even. Uh, that six can't be next to a four there. So this now is either five or it's yellow seven, eight. This one, ah, that can't be, that can't be yellow seven, eight because that would be next to green 2, 3. So that one loses its 7, 8 -age. It loses its, its yellow gray flash. So that's just four or five now. Ah, that's interesting. So four, four is in one of two places in box four and it's lining up look with where four is. That's an X wing on fours in boxes one and four. So the four in column two we can ask about. It's got to be in one of those. Ah, it's placed. Oh my goodness me. Right, this is huge. It's placed because it's got to be in one of those two squares. It can't be next to the one because that will create a five domino. So that's a four. That means that's a four. Now, that can't be a one anymore because it would be next to a four and make a five domino. How many fours have we got in the grid? Low, oh, we've only, we've got the X wing left. Uh, now this column must be interesting now, surely. We know that, 
we know that Do, hang on, where, did I, where was I going to put my... I want to say my green 2-3 was problematic. My green 2-3 is problematic. Yes, it is. It's impossible. I, because, because there is a yellow 7-8 down here, there can't be a green 2-3 down here. So where does green 2-3 go in the column? It has to go there. Yes. So that's a green 7-8, which, oh... Right, so these two squares now deserve a green flash because, in fact, that place is five um, because I know that there's a seven eight pair here now. But so this is a yellow green pair. I don't know the order. I don't think. But that five means this is now a two three, and that's a green two three. So that means that this over here. There's a 2-3 in one of those that's not green. So this is a yellow 2-3. And we can place it. Oh my goodness me. This can't be yellow 2-3. So that's a yellow 2-3. So it's not 4. So that's 4. That's 4. All the 4s are now done. I'm desperately scanning for the negative constraint here. I can't see if it's doing anything. Yellow 2, 3 is in one of those two squares. Don't know which one. I've got a 5 up here. Is that doing anything for us? Don't think. Yeah, well, 5's in a domino there. Can't go on the whisper. We've got a 7, 8 pair at the bottom of this column, which is obviously both colours. We don't know which is which. Ah, this whisper line though now. So this square is a, is a low digit by the whisper line. Oh, good. <laughs> well, it is a low digit by the whisper line, but I can tell you something about what digit it is because it sees both colours of 2, 3. So it can be neither a 2 nor a 3 because it will, if it, whichever it is, will remove the possibility of those two digits being what they need to be. So that must be a 1. Which doesn't maybe help us. I'm not sure. Well, it gets us a digit. I'm very happy to get about getting a digit, believe me. Um, hmm. So there's sort of a 1 9 offset here because wherever this 1 is, it can't be next to the 9. In fact, 1 is a little bit restricted. I've, I've just seen 1 can't go there either. But I'm just wondering about where one goes in this box. It's not in those cells by Sudoku. Now it can't go here because it would be between a nine. It would make a, a domino with a nine. Wow, that's, I think all other three positions are possible. I'm not totally sure about that. That feels like it's very close to cracking, doesn't it? So, what is it we do next? This yellow 2-3 means that that must be a yellow 2-3, which means this must be a yellow 7-8, which means this is a green 7-8. Oh, which we could have seen as well. Once we got this was green 2-3, we knew this couldn't be yellow 7-8 because it would create a 10 domino. So that is uh, green. That's what we're learning. That's green. Therefore, that is yellow. So this is a six, a, a two, a green two three, green seven eight six combination uh, with lots of green in there. Oh, in fact, look, okay, and it sees this square sees both types of green, so that must be the other digit. So that's the six that loses its color. This keeps its color, but loses its six. <laughs> um, and the six must do something down here. That place is a six. I have a feeling that was the last six. Oh, no, it's not. No, not at all. Oh, we've got that X-wing of sixes left as well. Though this can't be nine anymore because it's next to a one. Uh, it's very easy to make little pencil markings. So, oh, wow. Okay. 
this is a 2, 3 now, and we know it's a yellow 2, 3. So those are not 2, 3s. So this is a 6, 9 pair, no colouring necessary. This square's not 9. Oh no, oh no, 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 this is a deadly pattern. Oh good grief, that's going to have to be, that's going to be resolved by the 1s here. Okay, so I'm not that worried about that although I was for a moment. Now this 2, 3 is seeing this square, which can no longer be the yellow version of 2, 3, so that loses its, its colour, and this gains its colour. That's going to have to be yellow now. Which means that square is now not 2, 3. That square is 2, 3. Okay, so what are those squares then? Oh, this is a two. This is a green two three and a five. So there's definitely a green in here. Okay, and what else can we do then? I feel like. Maybe this column where we need we need green seven eight. What else do we need? We must need oh five. This fives keep cropping up now. Is there some some way of disambiguating all this? There must be. Okay, what is it? It's interesting as well, if you look at all the digits we've got, they're all very much in the sort of 1469 set, aren't they? This 4 can't be next to a 1 here. So the 1 moves upwards, which means this is not a 1. Does that place 1 in this column? It seems... Yes, it does. Okay, that's a 1. Oh, beautiful. Right, so that can't be next to 9. So the 9 goes there, the 9 goes there, the 6s get unwound. The 9 in this box is now placed. It has to go here. I feel like... Oh, the 1. Yes, I see. I've missed a negative constraint here. I was wondering how these 1s were going to get unwound, but look. There's a 4 here which can't be next to a 1. So this square's got to be a 1. That square's got to be a 1. I dare say that's all the 1s out placed. Okay, come on. Come on. We must be close to this now. Okay, so. We have got to ask questions about... Yeah, okay. Maybe we can do something with green 7, 8 here. Because green 7, 8 has to be in one of those two cells. Now, one of those is green 7, 8 as well. So that means this can't be green 7, 8, or it would be, there'd be too many green 7s and 8s in rows 8 and 9. So that square has got to be 5. And that has got to be green 7, 8 now. So we can get rid of all of its other accoutrement and award it the right colour. That loses its colour. Now this 5 is doing what? <laughs> um, okay. I don't know. I, I can just seen I've got a sort of X-wing on 5s there and there. So 5 in this column we can say is in one of those two cells. How many fives have we got? Loads, but not enough to resolve them, apparently. We've got an X-wing here and an X-wing here. Okay, so <laughs> where do we go now? Uh, yeah, okay. Where does, where does green 2, 3 go in this row? It's placed by, in fact, by Sudoku and negative constraint. It could never go here because it would be next to yellow two, three. So this, that resolves the five there. That's a five. That's a five. That one there is 
definitely a 2-3 and it's definitely green. That loses its colour. Now, does, do we not know what colour this is yet? That seems very strange. This, right, okay, down here though, we know that is now yellow 7-8, which means that is green 7-8. It means that is yellow 7-8, which means this is green 7-8, <laughs> which means this is green 2-3, which means that is green 7-8 which means, I don't know what that means. I'm sure it means something profound. That is now green two, three. Okay, great. And we've got fives that are not resolved. How does this resolve? I know how it resolves. This green two, three is rather beautiful because it can't be next to yellow seven, eight. So that is not, that's a five. So that's a five, that's a five. These two lose their color. These two, have to be uh, no they're not grey anymore and they're not five anymore so all we've got left is oh no <laughs> all we've got left is sevens and eights and twos and threes so is it this no we can't we can't do it with a domino so you've got to you can't do it with a horseshoe I mean you can't disambiguate the two three seven eights using horseshoes so we oh no, that's two more than five away. This one. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I've done it. I've done the puzzle. I've done the puzzle. <laughs> because, unless I've made a bad error, those are different colours. Those are different colours. So what do they add up to? They add up to ten. So, how could this be a three and a seven on a whispers line? Those are not four, they're, not, they're four apart, not five apart. So this must be a two eight pair. And if it's a two eight pair, all of the yellow, t oh, hang on a minute. Let's try and highlight. How is that gonna work? I wanna just highlight yellow twos and threes. It won't let me do it. Well, anyway, this is definitely two. That's definitely eight. So green is always eight. Green, green seven, eight is always eight. I think that's those. So yellow is always, yellow's low digit is always a two. And therefore those are threes. And these must be sevens. I've just seen I've missed one of the greens and I've labeled that as gray, which is outrageous. So that's gotta be a three. Ah, a three. Yes, I'm quite proud of that. Self-praise is no praise, Simon, but what a puzzle that is. That is just stunning. It's stunning from start to finish. I mean, it's a ludicrous idea. Absolutely mad. Completely and utterly mad. And I say that because how you can figure that this could ever be unique just with these little horseshoe shapes and the negative constraint and then how you can build a puzzle that is so unutterably elegant off the back of that. You know, it's just beautiful. The way you can work out, the way you can work out that domino didn't have a nine and a four on it felt close to magic to me. And then, and then once you know this is a six one, the way that this domino, not domino, this horseshoe starts to have an impact on how this horseshoe works is incredible. And then it didn't ever let up from that. You sort of had to work on the fact that all these two, three, seven, eight pairs had to not add up to 10 all the time. And so the coloring was, was well, it was so interesting. And, you know, it went all over the place. There was some magical moments as well. No, noticing that this uh, couldn't be, I think it was a one, six pair because of the four that must exist on these two cells. There was a moment of utter madness where I completely forgot you couldn't put a four in the middle of a German whispers line, but I blame Fistamafel for discombobulating me. Uh, and I said this before, I'll say it again. 
there is one thing you know when you tackle a Fistemafel puzzle, and that is that you are in the presence of a greater mind than your own. And his ability to make me feel stupid is, um, well, unparalleled. So thank you very much, Fistemafel, for making me feel stupid again. Uh, although I am rather, I have to say, relieved that I managed to solve it at all. It was an absolute pleasure. And I hope you enjoyed the journey with me. I hope you had a go at the puzzle. And I'd love to know how many of you finished it. Um, but thanks for watching. I will be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.